America is placing a huge bet on Westinghouse and the AP-1000, with at least $80 billion in reactors to come online over the next few years. And we've got everything from profit sharing and money from Japan to maybe just the right amount of government intervention. So let's get into it. The US government has signed a strategic partnership with Westinghouse's owners, Cameco and Brookfield Partners, to build at least $80 billion worth of reactors centered on the AP-1000. And in return for this generous investment, the US gets 20% of all Westinghouse cash distributions above $17.5 billion. And if certain conditions are met by 2029, the right to force Westinghouse to IPO onto the public market, with an option to take 20% of the IPO value above $17.5 billion over the next five years. Which means the US government could have a direct financial interest in Westinghouse itself, with even the possibility of partial ownership. But all of that is contingent on whether or not the US government makes final investment decisions and signs definitive agreements to support $80 billion worth of new builds. In this U.S. Brookfield Cameco Westinghouse deal, the U.S. government would supply financing, loan guarantees, and permit support in order to get these reactors built. And for that, the U.S. taxpayers would get to share in any upside if the fleet gets built and Westinghouse pays out. And this is the second big win for Brookfield this month. Just last week, Santee Cooper in South Carolina awarded an LOI to Brookfield in order to restart the VC summer project that was canceled in 2017. And that again is two AP1000s. And that announcement came just days before this recent, much larger announcement with the US government. But one big question is, where's all the money for this coming from? Well, a big portion of it seems to be from foreign direct investment from Japan. A Japan-US joint fact sheet lists nuclear as the headline items, including Westinghouse AP1000s and SMRs, with up to $100 billion coming from MHI, Toshiba, IHI, and other heavy operators. So Japanese public and private funds, along with heavy industrials, may be the ones that are underwriting a lot of the money that's coming into this. And this would also give them access to the engineering, procurement, and supply chain that would support the AP-1000s and other reactors that may get built as part of this project. And there is no doubt that this is a huge project and a huge initiative from the US government. So let's talk about what needs to actually happen for all of this to work out. First, the US government needs to firmly commit and that means signing final investment decisions and support agreements for at least $80 billion of new reactors. And we'll have to see the details a little bit later, but this appears to be based off of the total project value, not the individual investments that the US government is making. And once that value reaches $80 billion, the next phase is triggered, which is that after Westinghouse pays $17.5 billion in distributions, the US government would get a 20% cut of everything beyond that. So think of this as dividends or cash returns to the owners that Westinghouse is already making to its owners like Cameco and Brookfield. Now after Westinghouse pays $17.5 billion, the US gets 20% of everything beyond that. And by 2029, if the US has met all these requirements, the final investment decisions and $80 billion worth of deals, the US government can force an IPO of Westinghouse if the value of Westinghouse is greater than $30 billion. And with that IPO, the US government gets a five-year option to convert its profit-sharing mechanism into a 20% equity stake, which would allow the US government to then purchase 20% of the shares of Westinghouse, meaning the US government could eventually become a partial owner of Westinghouse, the nuclear company. And this would be one of the largest government interventions into a private company that we've seen in a long time. So what this starts to look like is a state-orchestrated scale program with financing, permitting help, diplomatic relations, all centered around a standardized one big design of the AP-1000, and with public money and upside if it works out. That's a new kind of industrial policy, one that's a little bit more market-driven with profit sharing and equity stakes, rather than the traditional command and control type of approach. But it is still pretty heavy-handed government intervention into what has been a private industry for the last several decades. It's not on the same level as France or Chinese socialism, but it's something that we might be able to brand as mega-industrial socialism, where the government partially intervenes but still works with private companies and capital to make things happen that it wants to happen. This is still quite different from what happens in China, where state-owned enterprises receive government money from government banks, land at the provincial level is basically given away for free or at discounted rates, and there is a strong degree of central planning. Here, the US government isn't going quite that far. The US is putting a bet on the AP-1000 and Westinghouse technology, but it's not dictating where that needs to be built or who is going to build it. So who are the big winners here? Well, first, Westinghouse certainly comes out on top with its AP-1000, along with its owners Cameco and Brookfield, who have made a very wise investment. This includes not just the reactors themselves, but the engineering, procurement, design, fuel supply chains, and everything else that will go into building these reactors. 
Next, Japanese financials and heavy industrials. Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, Toshiba, IHI for nuclear supply, Bechtel and Kuwait for engineering, procurement, and construction are all explicitly listed in the Japanese deal, with up to amounts in the billions of dollars, giving them all access to what is becoming a very large nuclear market within the US. Also a big winner is likely Fermi America, head by Rick Perry, the former Secretary of Energy, which says it has plans to build four AP-1000s. They've already selected a site in Texas, named after Donald Trump nonetheless, and will certainly benefit from the additional financing and government support to get those reactors built. And the last big winner are utilities and AI data centers, especially those that can pair nuclear power to AI data centers or other offtake agreements quickly. And South Carolina's VC Summer as a partially built AP-1000 is looking pretty good in order to be one of the first ones to come online after this agreement. So things are looking very good if you're in the nuclear industry, but if you're over at the regulator at the NRC, things may be looking a little bit more pressured than they were before. Because now the US government has taken a financial interest in the success of these projects, and that includes not just the financing, but the permitting and approvals, which would come from the NRC. And although the NRC is technically independent from the rest of the government and does not answer to the president directly, we have seen that challenged recently with the dismissal of some of the commissioners and resignation of staff. So while it is too early to tell, we will have to keep an eye on what kind of political pressure, if any, gets pushed onto the NRC in order to approve these projects. And I've said it before, but a strong independent regulator is absolutely crucial for nuclear safety, so I expect that the NRC will continue to hold its ground. It's also interesting to see who is not mentioned in this announcement. All the big attention has gone to Westinghouse, but there's also some in there for SMR projects like GE's BWRX300 and NuScale. But completely missing from this announcement are any of the advanced reactors like TerraPower, X-Energy, or Oklo, or any of the reactors that are using HALU fuel. All of the reactors and technologies that were selected in this announcement have some advanced degree of NRC review, use light water as the coolant, and use low enriched fuel. So the bet seems to be more on the proven design and the existing models that can be followed, not on new technology. And this is echoing something that I've been saying for a while now, that we should be focusing most of our efforts on large light water reactors that have proven track records and known technologies. SMRs and advanced reactors certainly have their place, but it's a little bit more niche into the specific application that they need to be used for. Large reactors like the AP-1000 already have several reference plants, and we can build out the supply chains as long as the demand is there. There are many fewer unknown unknowns with this technology compared to advanced reactors that haven't been built in decades, if at all. So is this new kind of mega industrial socialism the way to go and get the nuclear energy industry in the US moving again? Uh, let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.